I'm not sure if you can see my screen. Can you, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. Okay. Um, so what I'm, I'm going to do, I, I prefer to do this because it's a it's resource intensive task. I prefer to do them on a uh, mode server somewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to attempt to see if uh, I can get into one of the servers. Oof. I hope we have Kathmandu on this server. Installed, probably, maybe not. It appears we do, I think. So, so this this whole idea behind Kathmandu, by the way, you can find this. I, I find it. It's it's the same thing. You can use Python. You can use this if you want. But the beauty with pre-existing scripts is the level of effort, the relative level of effort that you, um, mm. the relative level of effort associated with whatever it is you're doing is much much less, right? Because a lot of um, the heavy lifting has already been done for you. So all you have to do is just tweak. Uh, you still can't run away from scripting, right? So you tweak whatever script you're coming with relative to the to the, to the library or uh, script that you're using, right? So um, just the idea behind this, um, the way it works is that um, you you can all you need all you need is a base URL, right? So in okay. this case, let's use uh, let's use you're saying UCT was problematic for you or something? Yes, UCT was problematic for me. Let's let's start with UCT and see if we can fix this. So, no, it's working right now. This is the best URL. Actually, this URL is this without the request there, right? So the idea behind this is um, you, I guess you create what they call a fix file or something. Um, you can look up details of what the fix file is all about, but I'll just call this UCT fix, right? UCT, UCT dot fix and UCT repository, repo.fix. Repo the idea behind this is you create a, uh, what they call a fix file, and within that fix file, you specify exactly how, uh, how these, these different fields from OI, um, the, the input coming in from the OIPMH protocol, the data provider itself, how you're going to process them, right? So what, what I like to do is, uh, because when I'm spooling fields, uh, tell me do I need, when I'm spooling fields, right? Um, check how many you need here. When I'm, when I'm spooling fields, <clears throat> Because because of the complexity associated with how some of the fields are, I, I, if I'm creating a, a CSV file, I'll normally mm -hmm. use some some obscure, um, what do you call this? Some obscure uh, separator, like an equal sign or something, so that uh, because if you use a comma, you find that the, the abstract, for instance, will have commas in them. Now, granted, the abstract might also have like some mathematical formula, which has an equal sign, but the chances are, um, so your odds are better when you use something like a, a pipe symbol or an equal sign, right? So this is what I'm doing with my, so what I'm doing here with my fixed file here, I'm saying I want to join all fields, six big fields with an equal sign, right? And then um, I'm also going to join uh, title field as well. Equal sign. Remember the but the reason I'm joining I'm joining these things is because they are duplicate fields, right? So a set spec can have duplicate entries. Okay. Um, yeah. What that is, I don't know who is trying to get in touch, but um, 
and I'm making the assumption here that I'm, I'm just using a simple Dublin core here. So I'm going to pull everything I need using simple Dublin core. And, and what I'm doing essentially is just, just, just including fields. Uh, come on, my, my machine is slowing down now. Uh, just including fields that appear as part of simple Dublin core. If you notice, I'm just putting these fields here, creator, subject, contributor, right? Um, I'm going to also pull the subject. It's all the 15 elements, but not all the 15 elements are used in repository, uh, repositories rather. Oops. And I don't know who is sending these messages. <clears throat> so, put that. so I have the subject. Description. And I also need, uh, that is important, obviously. <clears throat> Um, need the and then type we need to identify obviously. <clears throat> What else do we need here? Identifier language. Identifier language. And then it's a format. I'm not sure if we've left out anything, but I'll leave it up to you to just ensure that whatever it is you're putting is going to be here. For now, we just appear, we just assume everything is here. So you notice I have publisher, right? Uh, maybe a relation as well. Perhaps I see there's relation from the ECT. Thing. We just dump it there, and the, the thing here, right, is that uh, just dump. The the thing here is that uh, doesn't matter if a field is missing. Okay. Why? Be because <clears throat> if a field is missing, you have a blank entry in okay. your CSV file. So mm -hmm. publisher, relation, language, um, identifier, type, um, date. Um, and then description, subject, creator, and title, right? The, the other things I have, by the way, they, 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 because this is the descriptive metadata, mm -hmm. the, the reason we have the search spec here on top um, is because, because the, we need the structural metadata, which is going to help us make sense out of what we're putting weights. So the structural metadata appears as part of the, um, as part of the, as part of uh, as part of this, and and you know this by 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 using the get record, right? Mm -hmm. So you can get get record. Let me say get record identifier. Oh, is it small identifier? Or identifier that. And I hope this works. Right, so you, you know this by just getting a single record like so, right? And, and this, this we know makes sense because uh, if we go here and we call Carl, you notice that uh, when we pull this, mm -hmm. right? When we pull this without any formatting, because the problem with this particular instance of this space is it formats, whatever output is coming, the response that you get back from the data provider is formatted mm -hmm. in a user-friendly manner. But what you want to process, what you're interested in is this XML encoded format here. And you will notice here that, uh, I don't know if we can Python, two or something, is it Python just under two? Let me just see uh, Python. Let's put the print. 
comment. Okay, I guess we just have to use XML lint. I think I do have XML lint on my XML lint. <clears throat> right, so, ooh, it's fading still. Trying to see if I can find... Uh, Pull in the machine. Mm, doesn't matter if it's fading, nobody cares. But but the bottom line is what I was trying to showcase is the descriptive metadata is here, but what you're interested in is this poorly formatted structure here on top. If you notice from the declaration itself, there's a response date, um, there's the, and if there's a way we can extract this so that it becomes very clear. So I'm just going to pull this. Or oh, and I guess I'll just end here. <clears throat> Copy it and then just try and see if I can view it from here. Uh, in here. This is the thing here, response date, request. Get. So you see from the header, this is what we wanted, right? Uh, uh, that stamp which we don't need. Don't know if you can see this now, but let's speak. Let's speak. Header. Right, so everything after metadata is, the description metadata is garbage essentially. What we're interested in is where the header starts it's here, okay. right? Um, this stuff here. So I don't know if you can follow through with what's happening here, but the stuff to do with the metadata, mm -hmm. the stuff to do with the metadata, which is this. Uh, um, The record is out of here. The stuff to do with the metadata. So everything is wrapped within the record, right? So at the mm -hmm. bottom here, you have uh, the closing record, uh, which is here, right? And okay. the metadata closing tag. So within the metadata, within the record itself, you have header information. Header information is to do with uh, uh, things like structural metadata, administrative metadata. So um, uh, I guess this would be like uh, when the item was actually ingested into the repository. Um, this is the uh, global unique identifier, I suppose. But what we're interested in is, besides the descript descriptive metadata, is this stuff here. Because this, mm -hmm. if you remember, this is the stuff that's going to tell us which collection and which community the object is in. And we want this for labeling purposes, right? So, right. so this is what I'm doing here. I'm putting everything and maybe what I could do is uh, also perhaps, uh, yes, I'll just put the date stamp on top here. Right, so what I'm doing is I'm also putting this here. I want this. Okay. Um, all right. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is once I create this fixed file, all I have to do is just uh, whip together very simple. And these instructions you can find on on um, on the Kathmandu, Kathmandu homepage, right? It'll have de details on it, how exactly you go about, uh, I don't know where we are right now, but yeah, on the LibreCard Kathmandu homepage. There's, there's a very nice tutorial if you want to go down this road. Like it's as simple as this actually, right? So what you do is uh, the various flags you can use though, but a uh, simpler way is uh, Kathmandu. I've done this a few times, so I have to convert. I still remember, I think, where I, is it? 
that convert OAI, then um, the URL is going to be this best URL here that we pulled, which is here. This is what we want. So let's put it there. I don't know who keeps on doing that. But, um, and then I'll say, I want to convert this to CSV. I'll just specify my fixed file. Um, and I think I named it uh, UCT or something. UCT repo fix. Okay, this is why I think I may have. What we also need is to put the identifiers that are in the header. So this stamp here is in the header, right? What I'm doing is essentially this here. I'm saying I want to pull, no, actually, let me use this. I want to pull these things, this identifier here. Mm -hmm. I want to also pull the state stamp and the set specs. Okay. Um, and so cut, cut and undo. Mm -hmm. To get this copied here. file, um, I'm just going to specify which fields I want. So I have the identifier, uh, stamp, stick, title, creator, subject, description. We have the date, I don't know what else we have here. It. We have the type, the identifier, the language, the format, the relation. What is the publisher? Is it publisher? See one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14. Okay, so we have that. And then all we have to do is, uh, all we have to do is uh, specify exactly how these uh, different fields are going to be separated, right? So separator is equal to, separator character is going to be equal to type symbol. Um, Let's just do this and see if it's going to work and then I'll cut it short. Okay. Pass through. Okay, so you notice that I think it is working, right? Uh, we, at least we have some output. If you notice each, and what we can do is we can pipe this out to, to a bit of more here. We'll pipe it out to cut so that we see the line numbers and then pull out a few sample lines here. So you notice the first line is just the header, right? Okay. This is your header. And the reason I'm doing this is because when you 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 spoil it to a CSV file, like mm -hmm. like what we are doing right now, is it becomes a lot easier for you to import these things into pandas, for instance, or even in uh, God forbid, I don't know who would want to do this, but even if you were to do to want to import this into 
spreadsheet application, like let's say for uh, Google, Google, uh, Google Sheets scales quite fine, by the way. I've, I've done that myself. But, but let's say you wanted to, to do some preliminary analysis using, um, using Excel, for instance. It becomes a lot easier when this is in a CSV file. Like it's a predefined structure. Yeah? Um, uh, so this is it. I mean, if you look at the first record, um, you'll notice that uh, this is it. And I don't know if you can see what's happening here, but uh, I'll explain just now. Uh, one record I wanted to, to be wrapped around. So I'm not sure if you can see what's, what's happening here, but observe all record, all fields are separated by type symbol. Identifier, date stamp. So you notice that for the first record, which is line number two here, this is identifier, right? Okay. This is the date stamp. Mm -hmm. The date stamp associated with what you're seeing in here, when you when you spool, when you get the, uh, yeah, there we go. When you when you when we did a cow here, mm -hmm. we we put this stuff here. The date stamp we are seeing in there is this rep, this thing here. Okay. The equivalent of this, and then besides the the, the date stamp, you also have the structures, the collection structures. Now, interesting thing about the repeated fields is that they're separated by an equal sign. So I know that whatever analysis I'm doing, uh, I would have to separate things that are repeated using mm -hmm. this equal sign separator, right? Each field, each dedicated field identifier is separated from date stamp from set spec by a type symbol. Okay. Separate field, separate field, separate field. However, even though this is a separate field, mm -hmm this thing here, even if this is a separate field, but we need to separate it further, why? Because it's a repeated field. Repeated fields are, re are, are separated by an equal sign. So we know that this record, sample record we're looking at is found in this community. Okay. It's also found in this collection. And we can confirm this. We can confirm this by going to the UC2 repository and checking which structures are associated with these, these two, uh, these two things here. And we know it's simple, right? All we have to do, I mean, you can whip together a script if you want to, but the easiest thing to do is you just call the, uh, the list sets verb, and then you just uh, search for what you're looking for. So you see that the record what we just put is in there. This is a dissertation okay. community, right? But which particular, which particular field is it associated with? You can search again. It's PhD and doctorate. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is where it gets really interesting because uh, again, once we're analyzing this data, we have to be cognizant of the fact that the the repositories are structured differently. And this, okay. I guess, this, this this will make for an interesting. We can write something really interesting, and it probably won't be that novel. But why not? Who cares, right? Uh, so the other interesting thing is we can figure out uh, things like. Uh, which field it comes from by hopefully looking at, uh, hmm, let's see here. Do we have anything that points to date, structure, title, author, abstract, so long abstract, the dates, Beautiful. So this is what I was looking for. Because when you're creating your labels, right? Remember there's a part where we're dealing with uh, collections, right? <clears throat> the structure of the, the UCT is such that if you look, if we were to look for this particular, if we were to look for this, but for this, and there's a handle here we can use. If we look up this particular digital object, what mm -hmm. you will notice is that, uh, is that this thing is structured different and it's horrible, really. but for us it's horrible because there's no, consistency, right? So so because it's structured differently, we, we have to be smart in the way that we identify which faculty or which discipline mm -hmm. this PhD comes from. Because these people structure their, their things in such a way that you have the, the major type of digital object, thesis, preprint, and whatnot, if you go here on mm -hmm. their homepage, you have uh, they have this huge thing for research output, thesis and dissertations, right? So if you go into thesis and dissertation, 
Yeah. You will find another, another, you'll find a collection, right? Is it a, there are two, maybe more, masters or PhD. So this oh. digital object we're looking at is a PhD. And this is where it ends, right, for them. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, they start adding things. Now, now, they specify which particular discipline, faculty, and school, and department this thing belongs to mm -hmm. through the use of metadata. And specifically, they're using the, the publisher, right? Publisher. They use the publisher element, Dublin Core element. This is just qualified Dublin Core. So publisher institution, publish faculty, publisher department. So we can easily, we, these are the labels we want. And it's very easy for us once we spool this information here, once we get what we want here. So I just, well, it's, so you, you, you notice that getting this is quite easy. So observe, and I think this might take you a while. So what I'm going to do is, uh, uh, shoot, I don't know where this, sorry about that. I don't know where these alerts are coming from. Uh, what I will do is I will, I want us to spool this to, just check here. I want to spool this to a file and then to showcase how you do this, right? But because this is going to take a bit of time here, I'll just I'm running out of names. I just said a robot. It's in the script. Um, and then I just want to do this here. Yeah, robot in sender script sounds a bit strange. I, was, I think let's name it something else. It's just say UCT uh, report extraction. Yeah. I deal with Shibang, actually, this is me up a lot. I, location of a uh, shell is usually in different places, so I used. Oops, I thought we, did we not? Is it here? Paste something in here. This is strange. Okay. I thought we pasted something in there. Hmm. Yeah. So. I advise you to do this not on your local machine. If, okay. if you have access to Xamarin servers, now would be a good time to do that, actually. Um, because this, and so what I want us to do here is to, to spool this to, call this, uh, call this same name, but uh, just name it differently. This SP. It's hot or something. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to run this with no half and then that it will work. So the, the reason I'm doing that is because there's, there's, a, there's a, a lot of things being created, right? So okay. in case the server dies, um, so this is what we want here. This file here is where we are we're dumping information, right? So, uh, so, so sometimes it may be the case that uh, your script will be cut short abruptly, so you need to you need to just poke around and then try and identify where it stopped, stopped off from and then you continue from there. Uh, we've seen it happen for the UNSA repository 
country where there are some bad records that are uh, malformed. See the size is increasing here. There, there are some malformed. Uh, uh, just can watch this. Uh, there are some malformed. Uh, there are some malformed records, and so um, you can notice that this file here is changing here. Right? So, so we've noticed with Unza that there's some malformed records and, and, and so the, the script tends to cut, it's cut in the middle and so you have to identify the next good, if we can use that word, the next best um, resumption token and then you continue off the extraction from there. That's fine also. It's just, you need to verify that what you're doing makes sense. And you want to take this approach for these other things because all you can do is you put together your scripts and then you let them run. Run The following day, you pull them from, from where they were spooled off. Now these metadata records are fine. You can actually do them on your local machine if you have enough internet, if you have a lot of, if you have a stable internet connection. But I, I prefer to do this on a server that I know has a dedicated internet connection. Because mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let the script run in the background. I can even log out right now. It will continue running, in the, which is why I was using NoHub there which is okay. why I'm using NoHub. It will continue running in the background. And the, the other reason why I'm using NoHub is because NoHub, in the event of an error, NoHub will spool that the error message or find it in this NoHub.out file. Okay. Right? Um, but, but, but really, it doesn't matter if, if what you are wanting to do is to, to use Python, use Kathmandu. It's the same thing whether you want to first to get the raw XML output, right? The raw format like this, dump it onto your file and then do pass through this XML file. Uh, I've got into a stage where I prefer to, to work with uh, comma separated values because it's a lot easier to manipulate them in, in Python pandas, for instance, which is what I use extensively, right? So once, once I get this output that I have here, for instance, this UCT repo output file, file which has now how many records? 8,000, you see, it's, we're probably going to finish before we part ways here. We have 8,946 records. Well, mm -hmm. we might not finish actually because I think GCT has quite a number of these things. Uh, and I think it's best done from, from here. <clears throat> uh, yeah, it's 28,000 28, records. So, so right, I mean, so you can use this same te technique um, to, to, to get what you want from the Stellenbosch repository, from the UP repository, or from whatever other repository that you've identified as, as a good enough source for, for the data that you need, right? Let's not forget why we're doing this. Mm -hmm. we, need, we need data to complement the little that we have coming from the UNSA repository. Okay. Um, let's see how many. Oh, it should be done shortly, I guess. Uh, yeah, so so you can use essentially, right? If you can do this, um, if you can do this um, using, uh, because I think we, not I think, we're actually using the default uh, OIDC format, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you can do this using the OIDC format, you can also do this using the ORI format. We're using this OIDC. This is what we're using, right, by default. But what you can do is you can also use this. Uh, you can also extract what you want. Do the same process, but use this RIE format. It's one and the same thing. Um, yeah, so once you do this, you will have access to your nicely formatted CSV file, and then we can start our anal analysis. And, and in fact, this analysis uh, we are doing, I, th I think the good thing about what we, we're about to start doing is we can, we, we are killing multiple beds with one stone. The same data is going to your dissertation. The same data is hopefully going to go to this paper that we want to write for, <coughs> for, um, for the web conference or something. I wonder if it's still running, maybe it's dead. It's still running. It's still running. Usually, when the no hub file is, uh, is has is has zero bytes, it's a sign that no errors are occurring. Okay, uh, which is a good thing. Then we can cut this out. 
just well, sixteen thousand five hundred and eighty-six, right? Um, and the other thing, by the way, this whole notion of uh, <clears throat> resources is going to come in handy. This is where those Xamarin things you were requesting for are going to come in handy. Uh, if I were you, I'd probably seriously think about doing that, okay. uh, using that resource because uh, it can get really slow. It can be painfully okay. slow at analyzing this data because it's, I mean, this is nothing, I guess. I've, I've, I've been working with... Um, at the time, I'm working on a project, but, but I'm analyzing data coming in through from the NOD, in the OTD catalog. That's about 15, I think it's about 16 million records now, and it's been painful, right? Okay. Um, but of course, I mean, there are ways to get around that also. Um, so so I, I don't know, I hope this was, this, this is useful. Does this help answer the challenges you have? I mean, not just at the extraction, just taking just a few minutes and we'll have this data ready for us, right? Uh, this is uh, just do a cut, I guess. Cut or output more. Um, yeah, Oops. you notice that record number one, the first one is a header, then you have mm -hmm. the first record. The only thing you have to do now is because we are pulling everything from here, you'd have to weed out the books and that's going to be the next ta task, which is not that hard really, because this is already comma separated, it's a CSV file. Uh, okay. You can easily do this in pandas, where once you swallow this in pandas, mm -hmm. you can just go for, because you identify books by, books and all these other funny things by, the set spec. Right, you have uh, book reviews, books, right, brochures, book chapters. So all you all you'll be doing is you can you can come up with a very crude process where you you just uh, do a brute force search, right, uh, mm -hmm. to say uh, uh, or create a new column in pandas where if this column is equal to this, then it's going to be book chapter, and then you have your nicely structured uh, records, right? With journal articles and book chapters and everything you need. And then you're done. The next step is just to to now pull the PDF documents. Um, I, I don't know if this makes sense or is helpful or something. It, it does. So for the second part for pulling the, the, the bit streams themselves, wh where do we change um, from the OAIDC to to the OEI? Um, so, so this is where I was saying uh, uh, you would have to. So, so there's there's a couple of there's a couple of ways of looking at this, right? So, you you would have to look at if you want to use Kathmandu, mm -hmm. uh, go to the um, go to the go to go here. Um, I think I've shared the link. And yes. Then just look at uh, just look at. Um, uh, what sort of flag you specify for you to change the metadata format? I'm sure it's in the menu somewhere. It's in the menu. Um, so it's, it's just a matter of, I'm sure, putting in or specifying a flag. Can't quite remember where this is, but. Uh, let's see. the card.
I'm sure there is a way of, uh, there is, I know, but I'm just trying to see if we can find it on this cheat sheet somewhere. It could be that you need to modify the fixed file, I don't know, but, but also maybe. Actually, maybe. I hope I have Kathmandu on my machine. Kathmandu, I should. Yeah. Maybe the best way is to look at the man for Kathmandu. Where I... This is done, by the way, finally. Here, and we have a total of, uh, of uh, 28,949 records, all of them. Mm -hmm. So I have to use processing. Uh, you just need to replicate what I just did here. Um, remind me later on, if you want me to send this, I can send it to you, the file itself. Mm -hmm. You can replicate the remainder. Um, I'm trying to, but if you check the man files uh, for Kathmandu, you should be able to just check the, the tutorials. You should be able to figure out exactly how to to do this. Uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to see if there's a way of this convert Kathmandu convert. Do help convert. Yeah, you'd have to go through the manuals, I guess, to figure out exactly how to change this to um, If not on the actual man, if you just Google it up, I'm sure you'll be able to find something on GitHub and uh, these other places, I guess. Ah, there we go. If you look at this, you see this? So it, it appears all you have to do is just change the oblive. If we go back to our, I won't spoil it to a file now. Mm -hmm. If we go back to, <clears throat> if we go, oh, if we go back here and we just uh, alter this in such a way that I don't just mess up that file to just a few minutes anyway. But if we if we just change this in such a way that uh, we're not putting anything to a file right now, all we are doing is. We're just saying the metadata pr prefix that we want here. This is the flag we wanted. Okay. Um, we'll just say, because by default, I guess it uses, uh, by default, if you just issue Cutman do like so, observe. And uh, by default, you'll notice that it will, I think it will use Dublin core or something, right? And it's just on just on response. Also, this is interesting actually. If you want, you can you can if you don't use the fixed file by default, it's JSON formatted, right? So if you know how to process JSON, there we go. Simple, right? Um, but maybe we should use the fixed file. Maybe we should use our fixed file actually. <clears throat> Get this whole thing, and you know, if I use the fixed file here, there's some fields that we need, uh, the different fields. So, if you notice this JSON output that we just got here, right? When I run this, 
by default, right? Just going to test this into your I guess you want, but I guess you can always play back the same thing recorded. But by default, right? Mm -hmm. Observe by default, this is a sort of output that we have here. From one, let's see if we can get up to two. Uh, this is a long one. Let me know when you see record number two, my eyes should have gotten there. Ah, it's one one thing because it's one JSON formatted string. So it's one thing. So there's nothing like record number one. The whole thing is just going to be one. So if I put this thing here and I, I try and view it in some really nicely formatted. Did I get the... I guess this is on. So if you look at this thing here, right? Uh, what happened here? I think I may have uh, do this. to go all the way down until we get to type assumption token assumption token description <clears throat> and it's going to be there we go so I want to go all the way up to here so if you notice, right, maybe we'll start with no presumption token, we'll start with identifier, right? Search for identifiers. Uh, ID. Okay. This is good. JSON is actually even good. So set specs. Um, let's start with set specs, I guess. That would be much easier to identify where the records are coming from. So you can see here that uh, I guess we can easily deduce that uh, the first record ends somewhere here, right? Status. Set spec. If we can identify. I'm trying to, I don't know if you can. You understand what I'm trying to do here, but I'm trying to identify where records start and end using this okay. JSON formatted string. But you can notice that everywhere where you have instances where you have a new set spec here, it's completely di different record because each record is associated with set specs, right? Set <laughs> specs. So we know that uh, before this set spec, everything that comes before here is the record. Now observe, if we change this metadata prefix, this is what we got here, right? I'll quit this. This is what we got when we use the default without specifying any metadata prefix. But what I'm going to do now is I will tell Kathmandu to say we want a particular type of metadata prefix, ORE, right? Run this, hopefully it's going to run, I hope. Once we run this, if we compare the output that's gonna come here, you'll notice that we are seeing completely different things. Now, in what we are seeing here, some of the things that we are seeing here are what we want, right? Okay. I'm just going to quickly go up here to here, yes. Um, if you compare this with this, with this, you'll notice that there's fundamental differences. In here, if you search for the PDF, you should be able to find something. Mm -hmm. See that? Oh, yeah. This is what we are after. What you are after is these things here, something akin to this, because you know why? This will take you exactly where you want to go. Okay. Yeah, if we if we look this up, you'll find that we have the attribute. So, so essentially whatever it is you're clicking together has to, to just uh, search for this PDF. I don't know if this is coming up. Oh, it's downloading it, notice this. It's searching for this PDF, you, 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 you just grab for this entry. Once you grab for it, uh, and this is 
it's going to be this is the reason why i was saying you want to be very careful where you're doing this from if you look at this document i'm pulling right now this is 31.6 megabytes in size right this is just one bit stream and you have 28,000 bit streams so you want to be careful where you're doing this from so so there's that um <clears throat> But also because of some of the strategies that we are using here, what you we are proposing to do, like uh, oh no, we're just interested on the first couple of pages. What your script can do is, uh, as you are peeling the layers off of each each particular, as you are processing each digital object, you just chop it up and just get what you want. And PDFTK is perfect for that, right? These, these are utility tools that come bundled with uh, with U Unix, quite useful. Uh, so instead of you downloading all the documents, like what we're doing right now, maybe you can process it on the fly. But if you're downloading them individually, that might be better anyway. If you're downloading them individually, what you want to do is to make sure that you name them consistently. The technique I found useful is you give them the same name as the identifier. Okay. So because, because when you're downloading the file, you're downloading it, with the original name, right? If you, yeah. if you, the original, so if someone named it Thesis Version 1, UCT mm -hmm. or UNSA, that's the name you're going to get. So you want to rename it so that it's a name that you are going to use, that is going to make it a lot easier to link it to the descriptive metadata that is we, we just went through just now, how to harvest the metadata here. So if, if I don't know if I'm making sense here, but without education, what is this? Okay. I don't know if I'm making sense here, uh, but uh, can be like the minister robot, right? You say so light on with a folder called adult, right? So the adult content or something. It's adult education. recording <laughs> these things. We want to be very careful in life, but people are never careful. Anyway, so you want to avoid this, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So you want to avoid this. So instead of this, if I were you, I would name this as. I would name it as this mm. you name it using the you name it using the the identifier right mm -hmm. and the identifier is somewhere in the name the handle name and this you can name it this mm -hmm. because guess what this identifier id plus the digital object uh, identifier local id will give you a unique name associated with this um, and this is this is what you're interested in. And the reason it's large is I, I guess that it was scanned, right? It's an old document, so it's, it's a scanned document. That's why it's thirty megabytes in size. So it's not that hard to to uh, do it the other way around. Uh, all you have to do is uh, mm. is just figure out how to process this. All right, I hope this, this is going to help in getting you started. Uh, I don't know how far we've gone with, uh, there's some more things we didn't talk about. The experimental documents, you look into that or? Yes, I will, I think by two.